Hi, this is Mike Maloney, and Hidden Secrets of Money number seven comes out tomorrow. It's actually been finished and in the can and locked and loaded for a very long time now, but I didn't want to release it until people were really going to take it seriously. And I think that moment is right now. I think we're at the inflection point where a bunch of the predictions that I wrote in my book, which we've animated for you in this episode, are about to play out. And I think that the recession that I've been predicting is here now. And I think that there's some economic disasters about to start to play out. We're already seeing it start to heat up in Europe. So I wanted to show you some of the images from this episode, and I wanted to introduce you to some of the concepts that I explore in it. But first, you really should watch episode 6 again before watching episode 7. It's really important to understand the big four reasons that I see deflation coming first. Hidden Secrets of Money number 7 shows how the transition from deflation to big inflation or possible hyperinflation might happen as a consequence of the world's central banks meddling with the free market. So join me and my guests Jim Rickards and Rick Rule as we explore some of the economic processes and some monetary history to, sh to show how that monetary history reflects on you today, how it's just history repeating. And we're going to explore the invisible crash and we're going to explore the velocity of money. In this video, I want to explore some more of the invisible crash. And this is what an invisible crash will look like in a hyperinflation. Stocks will go along and they will double in a year and then they'll double again in six months and then again in three months and then again in a month and then again in a week. But if gas and groceries go up at a rate that's 10 times as fast, that means that stocks, even though people see them going up and they rush into them, are actually not going up in value. They're going up in price. I dedicated an entire section of my book, an entire chapter, to the concept of some things going up in price while they're actually going down in value. And to show this, what we have to do is to inflation adjust some of these prices. So I'm going to inflation adjust the gas and groceries uh, with the CPI's version of gas and groceries. Now, the CPI index, there's a whole bunch of CPIs. And the one that you hear on the news is called core CPI. And in there, they exclude the only two things that you absolutely need to survive, food and energy. They measure a whole bunch of other stuff, but they do not measure food and energy. They claim that it's too volatile, and I think that's a bunch of crap. But if you adjust food and energy to food and energy, you come out with a flat line. The price of an apple measured in apples is always an apple. So you come out with a flat line like this. But then if you measure stocks in food and energy instead of dollars, you come out with a line that looks like this. And that is the invisible crash. Instead of going up in price, it's going down in value. So you know, you can do the same thing measured in gold. And to show that, uh, I want to go to a couple, there's some examples here of, this is uh, a chart from my book, and this shows an invisible crash that happened from 1966 to 1982. The black line is the Dow Jones Industrial Average measured in points, which is basically a representation of dollars. And the gray line is the Dow Jones Industrial Average adjusted to the CPI, which I like to call the CP lie, since the changes that they made in the CPI back in the 80s under the Reagan administration. But what you see here is the top line is about flat. The Dow Jones Industrial Average rose up to 1,000 points and sort of bumped its head on it and couldn't break through 1,000 for 16 years. But there was raging inflation during that period of time. And so adjusted for inflation, I wrote in my book, there are two basic kinds of tax, the kind the masses can see and the kind they can't. The inflation tax is of the second kind. Whenever a politician promises you more stuff than the guy he's running against, whenever the masses think they're getting something for nothing, 
Whenever our government engages in deficit spending, whenever we borrow the prosperity of tomorrow to spend today, it comes back to haunt us in the form of an inflation tax, which insidiously and invisibly confiscates our wealth. The greatest advantage an investor can have is to understand that fact and exploit it. Now getting back to this graph, if you take a look at the gray line, if you had put $100,000 in the Dow in 1966, by 1982 your $100,000 was still $100,000, but due to inflation it would only buy you $34,000 worth of goods and services as measured by the 1966 CPI. That represents a 66% loss in value. That's how inflation can cause an invisible crash. Now if you look at the 1929 crash, you see that that's about a 90% crash. It's huge. But who ever heard of the crash of 1966? Nobody. And it's an invisible crash. The average investor doesn't know about it. But the same thing has been going on today. Um, here I show the, the bottom line is the NASDAQ, the middle line, the blue line, is the S&P 500, the purple line is the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and the red line way on top is the performance of gold. This goes back to the year 2000, so from January 2000 until today. These are the performances of the stock market compared to gold. Now, this is not inflation adjusted. Inflation adjusted, all of the stock markets are still down. They are below their, their 2,000 highs. And to show you that, here's the S&P going back to the year 2000 again. But if you want to measure it in terms of gold instead of dollars, take the dollar out of the equation. And here's what you get when this is how many ounces of gold the S&P is worth. So this is what the S&P... Uh, 500 index looks like to a gold investor. Stocks have been going down now for 16 years. It's gone from five and a half ounces of gold down to 1.65 ounces of gold. Here's a longer term view going back all the way back to 1980. Measured in gold though, this is from the perspective of a gold investor. The S&P has been falling for 16 years. The peak was actually back in 1999. And right now, the S&P has the same value that it had in 1996. And guess what, folks? It's going back to levels that it was back in the 80s. I don't know exactly when. Uh, you know, things go up and down in the meantime. But it's destiny is to go back down to those levels of the early 1980s at the beginning of this chart. So that's my take on things. Please join us in episode seven for some really interesting understandings of the velocity of money and of the invisible crash. Thanks a lot for listening. We'll see you at Hidden Secrets of Money, episode seven. And if you like it, please share it on Facebook. And I really want to thank everybody who chose us as their precious metals dealer because it is you, you are the person that made it possible for us to make these important videos. Thank you very much.